It's alive, yes. I have missed you. I upgraded to Yosemite and I haven't been able to figure out what the fuck is going on. Well, that and I left for China for two weeks. Jet lagged like a motherfucker. Okay, so yeah, back on track. Many people have been giving me wonderful recommendations, which I have been taking, and I shall review them as soon as humanly possible. One of the ones that keeps coming up, of course, is... Mark Danieluski's Daniel Mark D Z Mark Z Danielus Z Danieluski House of Leaves. Yes. Okay, we're gonna do it. We're gonna, we're gonna we're just gonna get this out of the way. It's been a while since I've seen you. Man oh man. Okay. House of Leaves by Mark <laughs> House of Leaves. Okay, there are way too many fucking reviews on this book, so I'm going to try and make this really quick and kind of, like, consolidated. Uh, especially, you know, to appeal to you, especially if you're skeptical, because this one is worth your time, I believe, if you're a fan of horror fiction or experimental literature in general. Okay? Okay. House of Leaves was written by Mark Z. Danielewski and was published in the year 2000. It is, I have to say, a novel that stands on its own as far as its structure is concerned. Really quickly, my biggest qualm with the book is that it seemed to be... A brilliant moment of insight, but with no end insight. And so the ending really suffers in that regard, in my opinion. But regardless, it's still a fantastic book. The entire novel revolves around a man who has learned something very terrible. Very much in the Lovecraftian tradition of the man exposed to true reality who will never recover. Who, upon learning about a recently deceased fellow in his building, named Zampano, finds this fellow's writings, which all focus on an extremely peculiar incident that happened in the 90s. By the way, the blind writer Zampano is blind. Blind. Borges. Total reference. And many literary references all throughout the book. Shit ton of references. It's incredible. This incident that Zampano has been writing about for years obsessively was an incident that happened to a very famous photographer and his family at their house in Virginia. Will Navidson, the husband and father of the family, took a very, very strange home video, which Zampano describes in the work that Johnny finds. So we're just going to deviate to a real-life story very quickly, because it's fascinating. This character named Will Navidson is at least partly based on a very prominent real-life photographer named Ken Carter, a man who grew up in South Africa during the apartheid era. Grew up in a middle-class family and saw all of these injustices happening around him and decided to document them. He dedicated a good portion of his life to actually exposing it to the world. So Kevin Carter took some of the most famous photos in history, and they were totally fucked up. He documented this execution called necklacing, wherein people would place burning gasoline-soaked tires around the necks of the victims. So a ton of war journalism and one very, very, very famous photo, which the book references. The photo is of a very young Sudanese child, emaciated and starving to death, on the way to a feeding center. And while Ken was setting up to photograph this child, this vulture lands several feet behind it and is stalking it, waiting for it to die, essentially. So when he was taking the photo, Carter was told not to touch the child for risk of contracting disease. And so he was just forced to do his job and not to help, just to take photos. So he did. And then he left. So back in the West, Carter received the Pulitzer Prize for this photo. Three months later, he killed himself. So this photo in the story was taken by Will Navidson, the character based off of Ken Carter. And his guilt over this action presents a nice little narrative device, an insight into his frame of mind. So anyways, back to what was actually happening. I know this is really confusing, but that real life story that kind of like infiltrates the narrative is really, really important. I thought it was very cool. So, the man's name is Navidson, and he has his family, blah, 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 blah. And Zampano, the crazy blind guy who's been... <laughs> and Zampano, the blind guy who's been writing obsessively about this, is writing about this incident where Navidson uh, took this home video called the Five and a Half Minute Hallway. The video is very simple. It simply shows you the layout of the house, wherein on the side of the house, outside, is a door that should open up into the garden. However, when on the inside, Navidson, holding the camera, opens up the door, and it's not a garden. No, it is so much worse than a garden. It's a hallway. A hallway that by all means and logic and rationality should not exist, where the light dies quickly. A hallway into nothing. So he basically like goes around it showing, you know, out the window that this door, this hallway should not be there. This door should not open up into this and that none of this makes any sense. Clearly this door is opening into something that by all means should not exist. And then it ends. The little video ends. So the story is told through our tattoo guy's notes on the deceased man Zampano's writings about this little film that this other guy took in the 90s in his family's house. So what Johnny discovers is that the Navidson family 
after a brief stay in Seattle, went back to their new house in Virginia, and something had changed. It was very, very subtle, but suddenly doors and spaces were just suddenly there. And as time goes on, the house continues to expand, just a little bit. And then Navitson actually takes measurements of the house from inside, and they differ from the exterior. The measurements on the inside differ from the ones on the outside. This is physically impossible. But like very, very, very minute difference, like three quarters of an inch or something, it's crazy. And so starts the journey as related to Johnny from Zampano. And even though Johnny can't find any evidence that this house actually existed, there are in fact footnotes, just tons of footnotes from Zampano related to everything from Stanley Kubrick to the French philosopher Jacques Derrida discussing this anomaly. And as Johnny is doing his academic study of Zampano's papers, he starts to lose it. He begins to suffer the exact same hallucinatory anxiety that Zampano did, he discovered. The really wonderful part of House of Leaves, for me, is the unbelievably effective method of inducing total anxiety. This extremely paranoid anxiety upon the reader, like our two narrators and the main characters. This unending sense of dread that something is behind them. Every step of the way, something that should not exist. I won't give much more away because it's certainly worth falling into the maze, of which the book is, quite literally. This is a perfect example of ergodic literature. I was talking a little bit about it in the annotated Alice review with the, the poem that shapes like a mouse's tail about a mouse's tail. So yeah, something where the text is structured radically different from traditional prose, and usually in its structure references the concept of the writing. And yes, it's sort of a silly device. But for emphasis on the anxiety of the characters communicated to the reader, what you get is sort of what would happen if Lewis Carroll threw everything out the window and took a nice cocktail of crystal meth and DMT. Because the book quite literally begins to geometrically expand and contract in a seemingly random fashion. And this, of course, makes it fun to read. Two different fonts for the different narrators. For, so for Zampano's notes, we have some regular font, and then for uh, Johnny's notes, we have Courier, like a typewriter. And he's slowly losing it. Pages with only one word, and then pages with backwards text, and uh, appendixes, and footnotes, and even, yeah, like weird pictures in here. I mean, it's like very, very... And it all is trying to give... Oh, look, there's Borges. <laughs> I don't know if I'd call it a puzzle because it can't be solved. Again, it's meant to generate that feeling of uh, being off kilter, off balance, unbalanced anxiety. It's great. So, like I said in the beginning, if you're a fan of horror fiction or magical realism, you know, Lovecraft, absolutely. Poe, Borges, any of that stuff. You're definitely going to find something in here that you really enjoy. I can't guarantee you any sleep afterwards, especially after the first, like, 15 or 20 pages. Hmm. <laughs> but it's better than food. And sleep. Sure. So get a copy, and then always remember what I said. If you come home, and there's a door that wasn't there before, get the fuck out of the house. Thanks for watching, hope you're well. Many more reviews on the way. Take care for now. Toodles.